Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in this video, we will see the limitations of the ripple counter and we will see that why the ripple counter is not used for the very high frequency applications. So in the previous two videos, we have seen the design and the working of the 3 bit and the 4 bit ripple counters. And we have seen that in general, how we can design the n bit ripple counter. And after that, we have also seen that by adding the additional logic circuit, how we can design the ripple counter of the specific modulus. And we understood that with the example of the mod 5 and the BCD counters. Now so far during our discussion, we have assumed that the propagation delay of the flip-flop is equal to 0. That means the flip-flop responds to the clock transition immediately. And that is why over here, this Q0 and the Q1 output is changing at the rising ages. But actually, Every flip-flop has some finite propagation delay and because of that, they will respond to the clock transition after the finite interval. So with the propagation delay, if you see the output of this 2-bit up counter, then it will look like this. So here, let us assume that the propagation delay of the each flip-flop is same and let us denote it with the TPD. That means this TPD is the propagation delay of the each flip-flop. So here, this output of the first flip-flop or this Q0 will respond to the clock transition after the propagation delay of this TPD. And if you see this Q0 bar output, then that is exactly opposite to the Q0. That means here, this second flip-flop will respond to the rising edge of this Q0 bar. But it will respond to it after the propagation delay of the TPD. That means with respect to the clock edge, if you see, then the output of the second flip-flop will change after this delay that is equal to 2 times TPD. That means starting from the LSB, if we move towards the MSB position of the counter, then the propagation delay of the each flip-flop will get added. And the flip-flop at the MSB position will respond after the total propagation delay of the N times TPD, where the N is the total number of flip-flops in the counter. So if we take the case of the 3-bit counter, then the flip-flop at the MSB position will respond after the total propagation delay of the 3 times TPD. So let us also see the same thing with the help of the timing diagram. So here, the output of the first flip-flop or this Q0 will respond to the rising edge of the clock after the total propagation delay of the TPD. Similarly, this Q1 will respond at the every rising edge of the Q0, but it will respond after its own propagation delay of the TPD. That means here, with respect to the clock pulse, this Q1 will respond after the total propagation delay of the 2 times TPD. And likewise, this Q3 will respond after the total propagation delay of the 3 times TPD. That means here, after the clock age, this Q0 is available after the time TPD, while the Q1 is available after the delay of 2 TPD. And likewise, this Q2 will be available after the delay of 3 TPD. That means here, for this 3-bit ripple counter, the maximum propagation delay is equal to 3 times TPD. So in general, we can say that for the n-bit counter, the maximum propagation delay is equal to n times TPD. So now, let us understand how this propagation delay will affect the output of the counter. So because of this propagation delay, momentarily, the output of the counter will go into the unwanted state. And to understand that, once again, let us take the case of the 2-bit ripple counter. So here, during the first clock cycle, the output goes from 00 to 01. But it goes to 01 after the propagation delay of the first flip-flop. Then if you see the second clock cycle, then in the second clock cycle, the output of the counter should go from 0, 01 to 10, right? But here, as you can see, momentarily it goes into the state 00, and then after the output becomes 10. So, similarly, during the third clock cycle, the output should go from 10 to 11. So, over here, it is going into that state after the propagation delay of this Q0, and then after, during the next clock cycle, the output should go from 11 to 00. But here as you can see, due to the propagation delay of the flip-flops, momentarily, the output goes into the 10 state. 
and then after it becomes 0 0 so as you can see because of this propagation delay of the flip flop during the decoding of the count momentarily we might get the false reading and the same thing can also be seen in the 3 bit down counter so like we have seen earlier this is the timing diagram of the 3 bit down counter including the effect of the propagation delay so here initially all the flip flops have been reset to 0 that means here at the first clock age the output of the counter should become 111 but here due to the propagation delay of this q0 up to this time the output remains 000 then after because of the propagation delay of the q1 the output becomes 001 and then after due to the propagation delay of the q2 momentarily the output becomes 011 and after the propagation delay of these three flip flops the output of the counter goes to 111 so here as you can see due to the propagation delay of the each flip flop momentarily the output of the counter goes to the unwanted states and because of that it can give us the false count during the decoding so apart from this decoding error if the clock duration is less than the propagation delay of the counter then we might observe the skipping of the count so let us understand that using the simulation of the 5 bit ripple counter so here this 5 bit ripple counter is designed using the positive wave triggered d flip flops and here as you can see the clock frequency is equal to 50 megahertz that means here the clock duration is equal to 20 nanosecond so now let me just run the simulation and let me show you the output so here initially to reset all the flip flops this clear signal is kept 0 and then after it is made to the logic 1 and here this preset input is already equal to 1 that means in this condition all the flip flops will get reset to 0 so then after if I just run the simulation then this is how the output waveform will look like so here as you can see the propagation delay of the each flip flop is equal to 5 nanosecond that means here this q0 output will change after the 5 nanosecond of the rising gauge similarly this q1 will change after the 10 nanosecond and likewise this q2 will change after the 15 nanosecond of the rising gauge and likewise if we see this q3 output then it will change after the 20 nanosecond of the rising gauge so ideally this q3 should have changed at the rising gauge of this 8th clock cycle but here it is changing after the delay of the 20 nanosecond and similarly this q4 will change after the delay of the 25 nanosecond that is equal to 5 times tpd that means for the given counter in the worst case the output of the counter will change after the propagation delay of the 25 nanosecond or we can say that the propagation delay of the counter is equal to 25 nanosecond and if you see over here then the clock duration is equal to 20 nanosecond so here since the propagation delay is more than the clock duration so we will see the skipping of the count and here to avoid the transients or to avoid the false count during the decoding let us read the output of the counter at the 80 percent of the clock duration so here although the clock has the 50 percent duty cycle but let's assume that from this clock the another clock with the 80 percent duty cycle has been derived and with the help of that clock the output of the counter has been decoded so here initially the count of the counter is equal to 0000, 000, 000 and then at the next clock age it will become 0001 and in this way we will get the proper count up to 01111 but after that the count should become 10000 but here if you read the count at this position then it is equal to 01000 and then after during the next clock cycle the count will become 10001 that means here the count of 10000 has been skipped by the counter and in this way this counter won't operate properly so as you can see to avoid the problem of the skipping of the count the clock duration should be more than the propagation delay of the counter or in other words the clock frequency should be less than or equal to the maximum propagation delay of the counter that means we can say that for the n bit ripple counter the maximum allowable clock frequency is equal to 1 divided by 
this n times tpd so by satisfying this condition we can ensure that there is no skipping of the count but still we might observe the decoding error that means while decoding the output of a counter we might observe the transient states of the counter that means if the clock duration is equal to 1 divided by n times tpd then we may not observe the skipping of the count but still we may observe the decoding error so to avoid this problem the strobing technique is used so typically all the decoders have the enable input so what we can do we can enable this decoder after the delay of this n times tpd because we may observe this transient states during the propagation delay of this flip flops and after this n times tpd duration we will not observe any transient states so if the decoder reads the output of a counter after this duration then there won't be any false reading so typically to avoid this decoding error such strobing signal is applied to the decoder and typically the strobe input is generated from the clock signal itself so typically from the clock edge after giving some finite delay the strobe input is applied to the decoder so when the strobe signal is high then the decoder will read the count of the counter and in this way it will read the correct count so while selecting the maximum clock frequency of the ripple counter we should also consider the on time of this strobe signal for example if the propagation delay of the counter is equal to n times tpd and the timing of the strobe signal is equal to ts then the minimum clock duration should be equal to n times tpd plus ts so during this ts time the decoder will read the output of the counter that means we can say that the maximum allowable clock frequency is equal to 1 divided by this n times tpd plus ts so in the question if the strobe signal timing is not mentioned then while finding the maximum clock frequency we can use this equation that is f clock is equal to 1 divided by n times tpd but if the strobe timing is mentioned then we should use this second equation so let us take couple of examples so that it will get clear to you so in this case we have been given this bcd ripple counter and we have been given that the propagation delay of the each flip flop is equal to 20 nanosecond so here we have been asked to find the maximum operating clock frequency for this ripple counter so as you know the bcd ripple counter has the 10 different states and like we have seen in the previous video for the mod n counter the minimum required number of flip flops should follow this condition so in this case this capital n or the number of states of the counter is equal to 10 that means here the required number of flip flops is equal to 4 so here the propagation delay of the each flip flop is equal to 20 nanosecond that means for this bcd ripple counter the maximum propagation delay will be equal to 4 times 20 nanosecond or that is equal to 18 nanosecond so as you can see since the strobe input is not given so we will use the first equation that means here the maximum operating clock frequency is equal to 1 divided by 18 nanosecond or that is equal to 12.5 megahertz that means for the given bcd counter the maximum operating clock frequency is equal to 12.5 megahertz all right so now let us take the second question where the strobe input is also given to us so in this second question we have been given this same bcd counter but now the propagation delay of the each flip flop is equal to 10 nanosecond and apart from that to decode the count reliably the strobe signal of the 15 nanosecond is also applied to the decoder so in this case let us find the maximum allowable clock frequency for this counter so in this case once again for the bcd counter the required number of flip flops is equal to 4 and hence this n times tpd is equal to 4 times 10 nanosecond that is equal to 14 nanosecond so now after this time we can apply the strobe input to the decoder so that there won't be any error during the decoding that means here the minimum clock duration of the clock signal is equal to 14 nanosecond plus ts that is equal to 19 nanosecond or we can say that the maximum allowable clock frequency is equal to 1 divided by 19 nanosecond that is equal to 11.11 megahertz so in this way as you can see the propagation delay of the flip flop limits the maximum operating frequency of the counter moreover 
for the reliable decoding of the count we also need the additional hardware with the counter so that is why this asynchronous or the ripple counters are not used in the high speed applications and instead of that the synchronous counters are preferred for such applications so in the next video we will learn about the synchronous counters and we will see that how to design the synchronous counters so if you have any question or suggestion then do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe the channel for more such videos